In this SwiftUI tutorial, we will create a fully-fledged onboarding screen in Xcode. As you can see, this screen consists of three main parts. The first section is the header. The second one is the center. And finally, the footer is the last section. We will create them step-by-step step in top-down order like a waterfall. That's being said. We'll start with creating a large title with a subheader for the header section. After that, we will create a ring and put a professional illustration on top of it. And at the end of the tutorial, we will focus on developing the layout of the complex button component. Each design of these UI elements is the final version without animations and interactivity. The only exception is the red button at the bottom. So we can navigate to the home screen and back from it to the onboarding. By the end of this class, we will have a fantastic onboarding screen waiting for us to put some life into it later on. Alright, without further ado, let's open Xcode together and start developing the layout of this fun design. First of all, open the onboarding view file and navigate to the body section. Here we need to embed the vertical stack container into a new Z stack. Command plus click on its name and select the embed option from the context menu as I show you. You can follow me if you wish by adding new comments to each container element. Enter, new comment, the end of the V stack. Then, another new comment, the end of the Z stack container. These comments are not mandatory to use, but, after all, they can help us give information about which ending parenthesis belongs to a particular UI element. Now, we will add a new color view inside this new container. Enter the following code with me. Color. Color. Blue. Ignore safe area. Oh. Edges. Oh. Because this Z stack expands its size on the screen. Therefore, we can create a full screen background by adding a color view inside it. The colors modifier is self explanatory as well if you take a glance at the preview. Okay, let's move on, since we won't use the previously created code. Then go to the vertical stack container and delete everything inside it. After that, let's define each major layout section by entering new comments for them. Enter this code. New comment. Mark. Header. New comment. Mark. Center. New comment. Mark. Footer. Super. As I told you before. We will start creating the header section. Please navigate to this section start adding this code to it. Spacer. VStack. Spacing. Zero. New comment, the end of the header section. After this code, we need to add some content. Text. Share. Font. System. Size, 60. Font weight. Heavy. Foreground color. White. Now let's add a subheader after this title, shall we? Enter this code. Text. Double quote three times. Then let's repeat it. Double quote three times. As you may know, we can add not only single line strings to a text view but a multi-line, longer text as well. The only thing we need to do is wrap this text into three double quotes at the beginning and the end. Now, let's continue entering some content. It's not how much we give, but how much love we put into giving. Then, let's add some modifiers to this text view. Enter. Font. Title. 3. Font weight. Light. Foreground color. White. Multiline text alignment. Center. Padding. Horizontal. 10. And, there it is. Our header section is done with this little code. And we can continue focusing on the center section. Also, please just ignore the fact the spacer pushed down the header on the screen. It's temporary. And by the end of this tutorial, everything will be placed correctly. Now let me show you something. Did you know that we can fold in and fold out the code of any views in Xcode? And by doing that, we can hide this part in the editor and make some room for other codes in the window. Just follow me and you will see what I am talking about. To do that, first, we make sure that the cursor is somewhere in this vertical stack container. 
Now, let's press the following keys at the same time. Option, Command, Left Arrow. Did you notice how Xcode folded in this entire V-Stack into a one-liner? As you can see, the three dots indicator inside the curly brackets informs us that there is a hidden code snippet in it. How cool is that? Center section. Let's continue our work by entering the following code. Z stack. New comment. The end of the center section. Spacer. As you can see, this spacer pushes up the header. Now, let us create a ring inside the Z stack with this code. Z stack. New comment. The end of the Z stack. After that, enter this code. Circle. Stroke. White. Opacity. 0.2. Line width. 40. Frame. Width. 260. Height. 260. Alignment. Center. This code will create a simple ring. However, we are not done with it yet. Let's add another circle with different width and opacity on top of this one. Circle. Stroke. White. Opacity. 0.2. Line width. 80. Frame. Width. 260. Height. 260. Alignment. Center. And, there it is. Now it's time to add the illustration and make the center section complete. Navigate the cursor after the inner Z stack and enter this code. Image. Character dash 1. Resizable. Scaled to fit. With this bit of code, we have just accomplished the design in the center section. I hope you like how easy it is to build up a friendly user interface layout with SwiftUI. Now let's practice how we can fold in this block of code, shall we? First, make sure that the cursor is still somewhere in the center section. Then, press the command plus left arrow keys at once time as I show you. Not every developer uses this handy feature. But if you like it, then nothing can stop you from using it. Footer section. We can move on by developing the last section on this screen. The custom button that we are going to create is more complex than it looks at first sight. Not to mention that code will be much longer than the previous section's code. First of all. We need to create a new container. Enter this code. Z stack. New comment. The end of the footer section. Before we continue, we will need to define all major parts of this custom component. Having said that, here they go. The first part is a static background. The second part is a simple call to action text. Then, the third part is a capsule shape, and this shape will change its width when users are dragging the button. Finally, the fourth part is the actual draggable circle shape with a right chevron symbol. In this tutorial, we will focus on creating these UI elements step by step. However, in a later class, we will learn how we can make them interactive. After all, this is one main objective of this mini application. Now, let's continue starting with the first step, shall we? Enter this code with me. Capsule. Fill. Color. White. Opacity. 0 0.2. Capsule. Fill. Color. White. Opacity. 0 0.2. Padding. 8. These shapes are way too big for what we want. That's why we need to add some modifiers to the container. Navigate the cursor to the end of the Z stack and add this code to it. Frame. Height. 80. Alignment. Center. Padding. These modifiers will add some required constraints to this design. The height of the UI component is fixed. And the padding is also necessary to avoid the screen edges. It looks much better now, don't you think? As you can see, by adding some padding to the second shape, we created a similar design to the ring in the central section. This consistency makes our design thinking professional. And the final product will look great. Now, let's move on. 
we will continue with adding the more important parts before we deal with this second part. So, let's do it right now. Please navigate to the third section. And let's enter this code. HStack Capsule Fill Color Color red Frame Width 80 as you can see in the preview, the capsule shape will cover the entire component by default. But if we add a particular width constraint to it, which is identical to the container's height, then we will get a full circle. Please, keep in mind that this width value will play an important role later on. We need to add a spacer to this horizontal stack container to push it to the left edge. Enter this code. Spacer. There it is. Basically. This capsule shape will work like an expandable background behind the actual button that we're going to create soon. Let's continue with creating the actual button with the chevron symbol. Navigate to the fourth part of the component and start coding. Z stack. Foreground color. White. Frame. Width. 80. Height. 80. Alignment. Center. Now let's add some views into this container. Circle. Fill. Color. Color red. Circle. Fill. Black. Opacity. 0 0.15. Padding. 8. After that, we will add a chevron symbol on top of this circle shape. Enter this code. Image. System name. Chevron. Dot. Right. Dot. 2. Font. System. Size. 24. Weight. Bold. And, there it is. We are done with the button's design. However, we need to move it to the left edge like we did the capsule shape before. To do that, first, we need to embed this Z stack into a new horizontal stack container. So let's do it. We just need to add a new spacer after this Z stack and watch what's happening in the preview. Enter. Spacer. As you can see, our button is pushed to the left edge, and this button covers the capsule shape beneath it. Great job so far. As you may figure out by now, these two UI elements will move together when users start dragging the circle-shaped button to the right side. We are almost done with creating the design for the onboarding screen. Now, go back to the second part, which is still missing. It will be a simple text view. Enter the following code. Text. Get started. Font. System, Title 3, Design, Rounded, Font Weight, Bold, Foreground Color, White, Offset, X, 20. I hope that you noticed why it was necessary to offset this text view a little bit. After that, the only thing that we need to do is to ensure that users tap on the button. Then, the program replaces the onboarding screen with the home screen. And, we will develop this functionality by adding a basic on-tap gesture to the circle-shaped button. That's being said, scroll down to the end of this view. And add a new modifier to it. Enter this code there. On-tap gesture. Is onboarding view active? Equals? False. It is as simple as that. What do you think about it? Do you like the simplicity of this declarative code that SwiftUI brings to us? I hope so. You know what? It's time to test our application after all this development, don't you think? Let's build and run the project. Shortly after the launch, we can check out the layout order and test the button's functionality as well. As you can see, the design of the onboarding screen with its main UI sections is done. How about that? Right. Pretty exciting. Now let's play a little bit with it. Please tap on the red button, and let's see how this simple on-tap gesture operates. 
and, after taping on the button, the home screen replaces the onboarding screen. Our code works like a charm. How cool is that? Did you like how we just built up this layout step by step? If yes, then you will enjoy the next lesson as well. In the following tutorial, we will finish the design process by creating a whole new home screen. And to make it slightly more advanced for you, I will show you how we can develop a reusable UI component in SwiftUI. Until then, happy coding!